Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Scorpec Destroyer. So the first colour that I'm going to use is the Citadel Contrast Black Templar. I'm using this rather than using Vallejo Black just because it's a lot easier to paint on. It goes on straight away and also gives you some pretty good ideas of where you're going to be doing highlights as well once it's dry. If you want it a little bit darker you can add another layer to it, no bother. Whereas with paint it does take a lot longer to put on. So. I do quite enjoy applying the Black Templar, and it is quite a good alternative to, to any normal black paint in this instance. So once you've finished applying the Black Templar to all the joints and the parts in between the armour plates, you can move on to the next colour. So next up we're going to be using the new Citadel colour, Rune Lord Brass. We're going to be applying this to all of the armour plating. So you've got his legs here, all the plates on his legs, his torso, like the rib cage kind of area, also the plates on his arms. They don't do his shoulder blades or the face because they're going to be painted with cryptic alloy next. They are very similar colours, this one's ever so slightly darker. But they do look great when you apply the new shade to them. So next up we're going to be painting the Hyperphase Reap Blade with Citadel Mook Green. It'll give both of the blades this as a nice base colour. Now we will be painting over pretty much all of this when we come to give it that kind of dark to light colour in a little bit. But you want to give that initial base coat of the Mook Green just to give it that flat colour that you can then work on. So if you miss any bits you've still got that green beneath it. Once you've done both of the blades, you can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to be using some Citadel Cryptek Alloy. We're going to be using this on the shoulder blades, on the face, which I'd painted with the Rune Lord brass initially, there you can see. We're going to give these a coat of the Cryptek Alloy instead, so that they stand out lighter. When you look at the picture, you can see that the face and the shoulder blades are lighter. Also, I've painted the spines down the back there with a bit of Rune Lord Brass, because with it just all being that black Templar colour, or the black on the back there, I wasn't too keen on that, so I thought it had a little bit of metallic to it going up the back. So that is why they're a different colour, and they're not just a plain black colour like the rest of it. Now we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone, just to paint up the little skull at his feet. Now it's Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm going to use this just to do the stones at his feet. When you're looking at the score pack, like the base colours that you started in, you've been sprayed with Citadel Lead Belcher, but I think it's a pretty humid day. And it's kind of happened with some of my Stormcast as well, spraying them when it was quite a humid day. And the shine and the kind of metallic gleam kind of faded and just gave this kind of weird matte grey look so it does look a bit like bare plastic a bit dull and drab but that is actually lead belcher on the base coat there now i'm going to use a tiny little bit of vallejo white i'm going to use this to do these spots on his eyes now you can leave the eyes for now you don't really need to put a dot in now you just want to get these little kind of glowing parts on his legs and his arms colored in we can do his eyes later on once we've painted the rest of the face so you don't have to redo the eyes Now I'm going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher, and because it faded when I was doing the undercoat with the Lead Belcher spray, I'm just going to redo these bits in Lead Belcher so they stand up and they do have that shine still. Now 
like so. Next up, I'm going to start with the shades. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel BL Tan Green. I'm going to use that just on these grooves in the blade. Because once you've painted all this up, these will stand out quite nicely. Just give that little bit of depth that you want. Now these blades will take the longest out of any parts on the model. So you're going to get a brief overview of how I'm doing this. And then on Sunday, I'll be putting up a full how to paint the blades video. So it'll be start to finish with all the footage. So now I'm going to use some Citadel Nuln Oil Gloss. I'm going to paint this over all the lead, lead belcher areas. Now you can use normal normal oil for this and then once you've finished if you want to give it a coat of gloss you can do or if you want to keep it dull you can use the null oil and trying to keep these a little bit shinier so I'm using the gloss ones for these now I'm going to use some Citadel Seraphim Sepia this could be just to paint the skull so a very very quick layer it's just to bring out the detail on it before we start layering that up next I'm going to use the normal null oil, which is the matte effect null oil. And we're just going to paint over all of these rocks to get into the grooves and give us the detail on them. Next up. We're going to be using the Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss from Citadel, which is the newest one that they've released with this set of Necrons. It's a really, really good shade. If you haven't got it, I'd recommend picking it up because it does do a lot of different stuff. When it pools, it leaves these quite nice dark splodges that kind of gives the metal a mottled look while still keeping it shiny, which is really, really cool. Now we're going to start working on the armour plates again. We're going to use Citadel Rune Lord Brass to start with. Like we do when we're painting everything else, you're thinking about where the light's going to be catching these armour plates and you're going to be painting it like that. So you want the initial coat to cover about 50% of the top half, so you're even the underside shaded. You'll probably see a little bit better on the next part of the video how this looks. We're going to try and just get the bits that are catching the light before we move on to the highlights. So this is how he's looking now. You can see the underside of the legs and that and the arms are still heavily shaded with the colour reapplied to the tops. So now we're going to use the Citadel Canoptic Alloy. We're going to use this to reapply the colour to the head and the shoulder blades and then also to highlight the areas that we've just painted with the Cryptic Armour Shade Gloss. So when you're highlighting it, you want to cover about 50% of the area that you've just reapplied the Rune Lord Brass to. And try and pick out the details and the under edges of any dents and scuffs to the armour too. Now finally we're just going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm just going to use this to highlight around the edges of some of these little bits of damage. And some of the edges just as they're catching the light a little bit more and that brings out the detail and makes them really stand out. We're also going to use this to do some of the little pistons. The little thinner parts that come out when it extends. That's the part that you're going to be using with the Model Air Chrome just to give them a shine. You have them on his arms and also his legs. I think there's one on each side of his head too. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Agrax Air Shade. And all we're going to do is we're going to use this to go into some of the grooves and the battle damage areas just to darken them up and dull them down. And that'll make them stand out a little bit more. As well, I found that some of the little cracks and dents on the armor plating of this don't stand out too well once you've painted them so I found that the underlining 
with the Model Air Chrome and then putting some of the Grax Air Shade into those areas does make them stand out a lot better. Now I'm going to use a little bit more Black Templar and I'm just going to put another layer onto all the bits that we did earlier. Now this will cover up any parts of the metallics that we just used that might have gone onto there and it will also just darken them up ever so slightly. When you're painting the black on you normally take quite a while just to paint up that very very carefully with this because it's quite fluid and it runs into the grooves really well it is a lot easier to paint on, takes far less time, far less effort which if you're trying to paint a big army is always a bonus now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black and this is just going to be to start doing the blade now as I say this is sort of like a short clips of how I'm doing the blade it shows you all the steps but only short clips of them on Sunday we'll have the full thing going start to finish that does take quite a while so the video footage on Sunday will be a little bit speeded up just to get it through it because otherwise it's about half an hour to do all the blades but you want to start by putting the darker colour at the ends of the blades because they're only quite short so you can have it going dark to light one way, light to dark the other and then the same on the other blade once you've got that down you want to add some Citadel Mook Green to the black just to lighten that up ever so slightly and then what we're going to start doing is lightening up the black until it's the same Mook Green and then lightening it past the Mook Green until you've got the lighter colour at the far end Now we're going to add a little bit more Mook Green to the previous mix. I'm just going to li lighten that black again. I'm just going to add a little touch of this to the area that we just applied the last layer. As I say, this is loads and loads of little tiny layers just to build this up slowly and gradually. If you want to take your time doing this, you can get it a lot smoother and a lot neater. You could also do a lot more layers if you wanted to as well, just to get that really smooth transition from the black to the light. So now a little bit more Mook Green again. You can see that start to transition into the Mook Green here because it is getting a little bit lighter as it goes along. Again, we're adding a little bit more Mook Green. Doing another little colour here. You can see that's almost at Mook Green now. That almost blends straight into the green of the blade that we've already applied as the base coat. Now we're just going to add a little bit more Mook Green to the previous mix. Do another little addition to it here. Now we are really, really close to just being plain Mook Green now. To be honest, when you look at it on there, it does actually look like it's just Mook Green, but it is ever so slightly darker. I think the light from the lamp does wash it out a little bit, so you can't really tell. It is ever so slightly darker than the Mook Green now. We're going to add a little bit more Mook Green and do one more layer like this, and then it's just going to be pure Mook Green. So again, you're just repeating the process. Adding a little tiny bit to the end of where it's going from the black to the green. So it's quite a long winded process but it does get the job done and it is very very easy to do as well. Because you're basically just doing little small squares or little lines of different shades in a row to give you that transition. So now we're going to use pure moot green. Just add a little tiny bit of that to each of the areas.
like so. Now we're going to add some Vallejo white to the moot green. And we're going to start lightening the colours and going up to a very pale green at the very, very end. Almost a white, but not quite. I'm going to use white to do a little highlight at the very, very tip of it. But again, as you have been doing with the black to green, you're going to do it with the green to white. Once you've finished those, it's on to the next colour. So adding a little bit more white to the previous mix, and we're going to start doing the next highlight. Now because white changes the colour a lot more than green added to black does, the transition is a lot quicker. So it doesn't take quite so many layers to get it from the moot green to pretty much white. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and carry on with that. You can see this coming together now, and once you've used a little bit of the Tesseract Glow shortly, you'll see how nicely that blends together. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix, and continue with these layers going down towards the lightest shade. If at any point you do it and you discover that your shade is very similar to the previous one, you can add a little bit more white to it, and just do that again, like so. You do want it to have a slightly noticeable difference because if they are too close together and you're doing them as wide as this, it'll take you forever. Obviously, if you're doing smoother blending going right the way across, you want to have those different colours in far thinner lines. Adding a little bit more white to the previous mix. We're pretty much coming to the end of the blade here. Only a couple more colours to go. But you can see that nice little transition going from the black to the really, really light green here. Now you do want to have enough of these green shades left that you can use them in a bit. So this one that you're using now, when you mix the next colour, just keep a little bit of this colour to one side. Because you will use that in a sec. So we're going to add white one final time to the previous mix. I'm just going to do a little highlight at the very end of the blade there it doesn't have to go to the very very end because we'll be using a tiny little spot of white but pretty much all the way there it doesn't matter if there's a little bit left over you also want to keep a little bit of this shade to one side as well so this shade and the previous one keep a little bit safe there for when we've finished the blades because you will be coming back and using just a little touch of them to highlight it again Like so. So now we're going to use a little bit of pure white. We're just going to go along, do some of the edges of the blade and highlight those. When we apply the glow, we want the edges to stand out and make it look like it is glowing. So you can see here, I use the side of the brush to do this. Get a little bit too much on, you can just wipe that away with your thumb and get some of the paint off the brush. But I do this side to side rather than using the point of the brush and trying to brush that on with the point just gently wipe some of the paint off the side of it onto that I find this the easiest way of applying it in straight lines you can see here the blade on the bottom left there that I'm rotating around you can see that I've used some of the Tesseract Glow on that so what we're going to do now is we're going to use Tesseract Glow from Citadel it's one of the new ones really really cool colour and all we're going to do is we're going to put some of that on the centre and all those areas where you've used white around the edge of the blade, you're just going to gently trace around that. But you want to try and lightly brush some of this Tesseract Glow so that it's darker and sort of more bright in the middle of the blade than it is towards the ends. And just go around all of the edges. 
so that all those little white edges are covered with the glow. So now that you've got the Tesseract glow on there, you're going to use the same white and moot green mix that we left two bits of earlier, and you're just going to gently blend some of that onto the ends of the blades again. So you want the last two colours, you want to do the lightest one at the edge of the blade, and then gently blend in the previous one to the end of that. And here we're adding a little tiny bit of moot green to that mix, or to show that it's the previous one with slightly more moot green to it. And you're just going to blend that into the Tesseract Glow so you've got the lighter parts at the ends of those green blades. Like so. Now I'm just going to use some Vallejo White. I'm just going to touch up these glowing globes on the legs and the arms and also the eyes. I'm also going to put a tiny little bit of this around the edge of the ridges where those glowing globes are set. Once you've got those ridges highlighted, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of white under the eyes as well. Just a thin line like you're doing a very very light highlight. That's what you're doing around all these ridges too. So that now when we add the Tesseract glow, we can give that quite a cool glowing effect without any effort whatsoever. So when it runs down into these darkened recesses, it gives the look that the orb is glowing into the dark, so it gives that kind of gloomy glow. And then when you paint it around the white edges that you've painted on the ridges there, it makes it look like the glow from the orb is on those ridges. So it's a very, very easy way to do a little bit of a glowing effect that takes zero effort. We're also going to do the same thing with his eyes, so there's going to be a little bit of a glow underneath each eye. So now we're going to go onto the lead belcher again. We're just going to touch up these little bits on the legs here. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo German Grey. And we're going to start to highlight the areas that we painted with Black Templar. Now it's good because although this is kind of the secondary part of the miniature, because you've got the arm which really stands out, and this is kind of the bits that hold it together, there's loads of great details on there. So you can get some nice little edges done and make them really stand out. Now we're going to use some Mechanicus Standard Grey. We're just going to do the very upper edge highlights on all of the areas where we've painted the Black Templar. So the tops of any little bits like this, or the underside of any ridges. You just want to highlight them with a thin line, just to make them stand out a little bit. We're also going to reapply the Mechanicus Standard Grey to the rocks at his feet as well. Making sure that you leave some of that Nolan Oil in the recesses. With that done, we're now going to use a little bit of Citadel Dawnstone. I'm going to apply the first highlight to the rocks. If you paint the rocks in a different colour, you can skip ahead of this bit. Now I'm going to gently dry brush some Vallejo White just over the top to catch those ridges and make them stand out.
add in a little bit of detail there, a slightly thinner brush. So now we're going to use Citadel Ushabti Bone and work on the skull. That is the standard kind of skull colours that do this. I haven't used Drakarth Flesh as a base for this because with the Primaris from the Intomus box I've used just the Ushabti Bone to base the skulls. But usually I would use Drakarth Flesh because of the amount of scroll work they have. I thought I'll keep the whole box similar and use just Ushabti Bone as the base. Which is a bit of a pain because it is a very very thin colour but it separates it from the scroll work that works fine I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the Ushabti bone and start with the first highlights you need to really squint to see this because it's slightly out of focus because he's focusing on the armour of the Necron itself And finally we're going to add a little bit more white to that mix and just do one final highlight on the bone. Like so. And that is the finished Scorpec Destroyer. I really do love these new Necron models and the Scorpex with the three legs are just superb, really really like them. But great fun to paint up and not too difficult either. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.